So you might know a narcissist. Maybe you know of one, two, or let's face it, maybe most of the people that you have known over your life, they've all been narcissists, right? How is it that you got conned, swindled, coerced into befriending or even loving yet another narcissist again? You know the signs, and to be fair, you let one red flag go because you know narcissism is based on a spectrum of behavioral patterns over a period of time. That is, one cannot determine narcissism right at the first meeting. Behaviors are noticed as a consistent pattern over a period of time. So, to be fair, it is important to give people the benefit of the doubt. It isn't right that we pigeonhole everyone as a narcissist, and it isn't right that we accept everyone into our personal circle of space immediately. It's our responsibility to hold people to our personal boundary line, both physically and emotionally. Your personal space is your personal space, and it does not matter if someone is a narcissist or not. You have an obligation to hold yourself accountable to yourself. You owe no one an explanation as to why you seem guarded. You owe it to yourself to keep yourself emotionally and physically safe. The more you recognize and exercise boundary keeping, the stronger in self-confidence you become. Knowing what you want and standing true for yourself to yourself is essential. To get to that point, it is important to educate yourself on yourself. Becoming more self-aware allows you to get an emotional grip on yourself so that you do not emotionally react and irrationally deflect on anyone, even the toxic individual you may know that expresses narcissistic tendencies. Now, the narcissist, the toxic individual who expresses traits of narcissism, they always want the upper hand and they feed off of your negative reactions. This you know. So I'm hopeful that this video will give you some tips and pointers to help you become more aware of your emotions and the emotions of others around you so that you can monitor yourself and become less emotional engaging in a way that offers the narcissist their supply or fuel. The skills you learn in becoming more emotionally self-aware are not easy to come by. It is hard to read the emotions of others. You're not a mind reader, so nature has something built in. Nature has given us clues in to read other people's emotions through facial features. When you can recognize your own emotions by recognizing your own facial features, you can identify your triggers and how those triggers manifest more easily. It is suggested that you practice your facial expressions in front of a mirror so that you can become better in tune to your own emotions first, as facial expressions are a natural and they are innate in everyone, including the narcissist. They cannot be faked. They can be misunderstood and misinterpreted, and that is why it is important to evaluate your own expressions before you evaluate someone else's. These skills, once you begin to see them in yourself, you will become more aware of them in others, as these skills allow you to, number one, become consciously aware of how you are becoming emotional. By recognizing your triggers and your thought patterns before you verbalize or act on your emotions, this allows you to develop the skill set to make conscious choices about how you want to handle yourself in turbulent situations and with emotional people. For example, if someone is pushing your buttons and you feel like you may be negatively affected by that, and you may feel like you just want to negatively have an outburst, 
becoming self-aware of this allows you to then decide that it might be best for you to just politely excuse yourself from the conflict and decline further engagement. When you become more aware of your own emotional stance by observing your emotional features, you then, number two, you are then choosing how you react when you are emotional as recognizing your emotional stance allows you to better protect yourself and the other individual as sometimes our negative reactions causes negative reactions in others. Have you ever had a narcissist tell you, well, I wouldn't have reacted that way if you didn't do this first, or I wouldn't have said that if you wouldn't have said this. I wouldn't have gotten mad if you wouldn't have done this. This under, understanding your emotional stance by looking at your facial features allows you to see the triggers and feel them rising up in your own person to head the conflict at the pass and not engage in the narcissistic tirade so much. As the narcissist in their anger tries to minimize the initial cause to your reaction and instead they gaslight you further to react to them. When you can see the situation objectively you will less likely provide a source of fuel for the narcissist. Number three Becoming more aware of your emotions helps you to become more aware of someone else's emotions. Emotions are the foundation of relationships. It is important to be sensitive to the feelings of others. This allows you to become more empathetic to your needs as well as the needs of others. As you become adept to seeing the emotional feedback on your own face. You will then become more inclined to recognize this in others as this will help you to disengage yourself from the conversation of the narcissist before it escalates any higher. Number four, becoming emotionally adept enables you to gain information about how others are feeling. This can better open lines of communication as you will gain the skill to better assess how the other person might be feeling and you can then redire redirect your thoughts and your words accordingly. So understanding what your emotions look like and recognizing the universal patterns of emotions shown on the face will also help you recognize the raw emotions of a narcissist that cannot be faked. An interesting observation by, made by Paul Ekman in his well-written book entitled Emotions Revealed is this. We do not seek to challenge why we are feeling what we do. Instead, we seek to confirm it. So it is, it is my hope that this video draws your attention to the opposite, to help challenge you to face why you are feeling a particular emotion, to not confirm it com solely, but also to address it and to heal from it. It is my personal opinion, and again, this is only an opinion. Subconsciously, we engage with the narcissist or we set ourselves up to have relationships with them to validate what we are already feeling, that negative emotions inside that we yet cannot yet recognize. Their toxic behavior toward us their toxic behavior towards us validates those negative emotions we are feeling but cannot recognize. However, these feelings are so rooted within that we may not have a memory or we may not recall when or where they showed up, but they are just buried so deeply that we have chosen to ignore these invalidating feelings. But our subconscious knows otherwise. So I'm going to go on a limb here and further suggest, because I like thinking deep into our spirituality, that the narcissist attacks us verbally, and we take that in through our consciousness, our awakened awareness. And setting aside all the symptoms of trauma that we react to with the narcissist, this might be 
only just one reason among the many layers of reasons why we do disagree with the narcissist and negatively react because we are consciously aware that we are not who they assume we are. However, subconsciously, there might be a slight truth to what they are saying because we have been imprinted with the narrative before from a traumatic childhood. We may not remember when or where it happened, but it is there. We are emotionally attached to the narcissist, and this might be why we can't let go, among other reasons why we can't let go, because they validate who we subconsciously believe we are. However, when we give it some thought and recognize who we truly are on a conscious, waking, thinking level, they do have us all wrong. And that might be one of the reasons why we negatively react to their emotional negative outlook towards us. So helping ourselves to look at ourselves emotionally through our facial features and the way we feel inside, that's not a bad thing. Subconsciously, we love the narcissist, but consciously, we hate them. Our subconscious needs them to validate what has already been imprinted in us on a negative way. And yet our consciousness can't stand to get away from them. If I'd like to know what you think about this concept in the comments section below. Again, this is just a thought theory, so don't take it to heart. It may make a bit of sense or it may not. And for me, it makes sense, especially when we allow ourselves the space and time for self-reflection and journey down the road of self-awareness and self-awakening. This theory is just something to consider. I'd like to hear your thoughts on this, this though. So if you can add to this or you have something else in mind, just let me know. When we are not aware of our own emotions and our emotional reactions, we are asking someone else to validate or justify these emotions when we engage with them with emotional intensity that causes them to pull away or bend to our ways of thinking or doing things. This is ultimately what a narcissist does and this only prolongs the negative emotions within us. As the narcissist embodies and becomes their feelings, they try to make us embody and become our negative feelings. So turning to others in emotional tactical positioning prolongs their emotions to maintain who they are, causing the narcissist to believe that their emotional standing is not wrong. Most of us are not consciously aware of our reactions. It is usually after when we have calmed down do we consider our emotional error. However, in becoming aware of our emotions, I believe we can better deal with states of depression and anxiety if we are willing. In dealing with narcissism, it is important to understand their emotions so we can better react to them. This is not about absolving them of their guilt, nor enabling the narcissist. This is about better understanding them so you can shift your focus onto you to better understand to better understand you. As you learn of ways to better manage your emotions, you will also come to understand how not to give in to the narcissist's emotional demands by not taking what they say or do personally. Understanding and recognizing your emotions on an intimate level allows you to not absorb the toxic behavior of the other person. You learn to disengage as you learn not to personalize their reactions of their perceived reality. Paul Ekman, in his book Emotions Revealed, also offers this insight. We often distort other people's motives to fit our emotions. This is what the narcissist does, and it's, mo it's what most of us do. When we understand the narcissist's motives, we can then better react so that we do not turn to them to validate the way that we feel. We then can also not allow them, the narcissist, to use us as fuel to validate the way that they feel. 
As I mentioned before, emotions are often shown in body language, particularly the facial features. So let's look at two potential negative facial features to help us define these emotions within us and the narcissists that are often expressed. Now I'm using Paul Ekman's book for reference. I am not an expert. I am learning as this book has been an invaluable source for me as I learn about narcissism and to better deal with my own feelings and emotions that help me heal from narcissistic abuse. This has led to a personal self-awareness journey. So when you read this book, I encourage you to read this book. I recommend this book as it may be an invaluable tool for you. Now there are two main negative emotions that go overlooked and these are contempt and disgust. Now contempt is the feeling that a person or thing is beneath consideration. They view the person or that thing as worthless or deserving scorn. Disgust, on the other hand, is similar to contempt as it is defined as this, a feeling of revulsion or strong disapproval aroused by something unpleasant or offensive. When someone is disgusted with something, you will see the nose wrinkle. This can be mild to severe. The sides of the nose along the bridge are pulled upwards. The eyes remain relaxed. When someone expresses an extreme form of disgust, the upper lip will raise, either on one side or both sides. Contempt is similar. However, usually just one side of the face is revealed and Usually it's the dominant side, so I'm a right-hander, so I'm usually, I sneer on the right side of my face. The nose wrinkles in contemptuous emotional behavior, and the lips can raise, or the lip, the one-sided lip can raise. Sometimes the lips are pulled to one side, but they do not raise upwards in a sneer. So this is something this is something to look out for because you can have or sometimes it can be subtle or severe. The combination of contempt and disgust we'll see that the lip is raised, the nose is wrinkled, and the eyebrows, the eyebrows now will become involved, and they will pull together, and the eyelids become slightly raised. I'm not doing that very well. Now, with contempt, there is anger involved, but no anger is shown in disgust. A sign of anger involves the nose wrinkling, eyebrows pulled towards eyebrows pulled inwards and the lips are slightly and tightly pressed together. Contempt can also be mixed with joy. This is also known as the duping delight response and can fall under the category of a micro expression. This is a split second involuntary response and it is a tell or a giveaway that someone might be evading or avoiding being honest with you. Narcissists often express this, so do psychopaths, uh, as this is expressed after or just before someone tells you something, they don't want you to know the full and complete story of. They think they're getting one up on you. They use this duping delight to avoid the question. It is often a sign of lying, but not always. It's just a sign that in some area of the conversation, someone is being deceptive. The duping delight smile is expressed by the tightening of the lip corner with a slight smile. This is a smug, contemptuous look. Paul Ekman dedicates an entire chapter on contempt and disgust. While disgust is experienced with a sense of taste, touch, and smell, Contempt usually accompanies a sense of superiority to the person or offending thing. One can feel contempt for an individual 
as their offense is degrading, but one would not necessarily find them disgusting and need to get away from them. Disgust can lead to unpleasant sensations in the body such as nausea, whereas contempt leads to anger. Because of what contempt is, and let's face it, a narcissist is a contemptuous person. They project their anger from their historical trauma onto us. It has been a question that narcissists suffer from anger issues, and that they do. Narcissists are extremely volatile when it comes to having anger issues. However, that is not to say that they suffer only from anger issues. What we see in narcissism is their ability to get angry very quickly because their anger resides just below the surface. It's waiting to come out as it just needs a reason to come out and it's there. Disgust and contempt are often are also very real emotions to a narcissist and they are used as a form of control and manipulation. No one wants to be held in contempt of another person and no one wants to be considered disgusting. So we do our best to not offend the offended person, right? And this is how the narcissist can better manipulate us because we sometimes want to people please. So using contempt and control, or so using contempt and disgust as a forms of control is manipulation. And they emotionally manipulate us. They gaslight and strongman you into bending to their will. Disgust is often confused for anger. And because of this, Paul Ekman concludes that disgust can transition and become anger. When you are on the receiving end of someone's anger and disgust, it is important to not to try to defend yourself. Defending yourself enters a justification, a reason why you did what you did or said what you did or said what you said. To the narcissist, defending yourself invalidates their reason for feeling the way that they do towards you and they will fight you in a way that makes the situation much, much worse. Do not engage with them. Instead, tell the individual that you recognize that they are angry or hurt. However, right now is not a good time to talk as you are stressed and you need to collect your thoughts. Engaging with them will only allow them to use you as their supply. Do not take their anger or disgust personal as this is within them as the underlying issues are triggered to surface immediately as soon as something go, does not go in their favor. The narcissist is responsible for how they treat you. However, in this video, I would like to make it clear how important it is for you to take responsibility for the way that you treat yourself. Becoming your own advocate is essential in healing from trauma and all things narcissism. I hope that this video has given you some insight into the dynamics of human behavior as we are fueled and led by our emotions. We have a choice to allow our emotions to have mastery over us or we can, choose, or we can recognize them to heal of the hidden triggers so that now we have mastery over our emotions. So if you like this video, please give it a like and a thumbs up. Comment down below and I will see you next time. Thank you for watching. My name is Shannon Gilmore. Be blessed.